In this video, I'm going to change out the defrost heater on this General Electric side-by-side -side refrigerator. It's been running hot, and as you can tell, the freezer has frozen over. A small amount of ice buildup is common in the refrigeration process, but there is a defrost heater that engages to remove the ice before it becomes a problem. If you've got a block of ice like this in your freezer, it's likely your defrost heater has gone bad. Check the description for timestamps in case you want to jump around to a certain step, and to check for the tools and parts that I use in this video. If you have a block of ice in your freezer and you can't wait a few days like I did, you can always use a hairdryer or a heat gun to melt it away more quickly. Before working on a refrigerator, be sure to cut the power. Next, I want to remove all the racks and drawer holders so I can access this back panel. Now I'm going to use a quarter inch socket and my impact driver to remove these screws so I can access the area where the defrost heater is located. Now I want to remove the ground wire and I want to be extra careful with this panel because it's thin and it can cut me. Here I'm using my quarter inch socket again to remove the screws holding in the defrost heater. Now be careful when removing these screws because there is a drain right below that. So if one of those screws falls into that, it will be or could be difficult getting out. Now that we can lay eyes on the defroster, we can easily tell that there's been a short of some kind that has charred parts of the unit and the wires, as well as the connectors and the connector covers. This is little more of a close-up, and as you can tell, this thing had some serious issues at one point. Uh, everything is charred. Um, this is a little bit more than I expected to get into, but we are going to have to cut these wires, not these wires, but the wires on the fridge, and add new connectors. So again, that is a little more than I expected, but uh, I think we can do it. And here is the new unit. I'll leave that part number and a link to this actual part in the description below. And as you can tell, I paid about 13 bucks for this. So to find the part that you need, you can always look up the model number of your refrigerator and find a parts list. That's what I did. But in addition to that, always match up the old part to the new part to make sure they're exactly the same. I've got this box of assorted connectors at my local Harbor Freight, but I will leave a link to a similar one on Amazon in the description. So here I'm giving the wire and the connector one more look over to see if I can reuse it because I really don't want to cut this wire, but this thing is so far gone I'm going to have to cut it. And same thing with this, those plastic covers right there just disintegrated. All right, and here goes nothing. We'll make this cut. And just a quick note, the wire has a bend as it gets closer to that connector. Try to leave as much of that bend as possible. Its main purpose is to allow water that's dripped down onto it to kind of get to that bend and drip off instead of traveling into the electrical connection on the defrost heater. So here I noticed that the sheathing around this wire was too thick to allow my connectors to go in there. So I want to see how thick the actual wire is. And as you can tell, it's very thin. So what I'm gonna have to do is peel back a lot of that sheathing in order to get my connector on, and I'm not gonna be able to get that connector over the sheathing. Um, it's just gonna have to be kinda even with it, as you see there. So this first attempt at crimping this connector on didn't go so well. I think I may have clipped the plastic and didn't get onto the metal a couple times, which caused that uh, basically the whole connector to fall apart. 
but I am going to pull out a pair of better crimpers. I don't like them because you have to pull them apart from the bottom. They're not spring loaded like these, but I got these from Harbor Freight and they work pretty well except for in this scenario. So that is crimped really well, but there's not a whole lot of wire in there. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this up to make it a little bit more secure. Here's a quick tip, before you remove anything from the refrigerator, take a picture of it. That way you'll know where the wires go and how to orient the part back in the fridge when you replace it. I had forgot to take pictures, so I actually had to go back in my video and take some screenshots to figure out how to get these connectors back on. This is a hanger to hang on that. So I'm gonna make sure I'm good here. Make sure I'm good there. And then hang it, and then it stays. Now we'll put everything back together and plug up the refrigerator to make sure the defrost heater is working properly.
Now we fast forward two weeks after plugging it in. I've checked it a few times a day and the temperatures have been perfect. Ignoring that temperature gauge as I ha did have to turn this off for a couple hours one day so it got kind of high on the freezer side. But other than that, it's been perfect, which is what we want. And the most important thing is there's no ice buildup, which means our defrost heater replacement worked like a charm. And I'm sure when we're on the freezer side, you could hear that loud hum. That's an evaporator fan that I got to change out. So I'll be doing that soon. Be sure to subscribe so you can catch that one. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and I will catch you on the next one.